Welcome back to the Wealth Academy Educational Series. I'm Adam Koo. And have you ever wondered what's the best strategy to use when you enter the stock market? Should you enter for the short term, for the long term? Should you buy and hold and dollar cost average or should you trend follow? Buy only on the uptrends and exit on the downtrends? Should you use more fundamental analysis or technical analysis? And when is the best time to enter and exit that stock? Well, it all depends on the kind of stocks you're buying because all stocks are different. They've got different characteristics and they behave differently. And it all depends on the objective of buying that stock. So let's understand the different kind of stock categories and which ones you should be buying. Before that, please pause the video and read the risk disclaimer so you understand the risk of investing. And once you're ready, let's continue. If you look at the entire universe of stocks, they can be divided into two categories, two main categories. Kind of like human beings are divided into males and females. So the first category would be defensive stocks. You can imagine it sounds like a male. Defensive, right? So defensive stocks are stocks of companies that sell a product or a service that is a necessity. So in other words, in the worst recession, you still have to use that product. For example, toothpaste or detergent, or soap, or toilet paper. You won't say because of the recession, I'm not going to brush my teeth anymore, right? So as a result, these companies have very consistent sales and profits, regardless of the economic cycle, because people will still buy their products. These are often known as boring businesses. I mean, think of it, is toothpaste really exciting? No, it's boring, right? But biotechnology is exciting, high tech is exciting, but it's boring. Now, boring may not always be bad. In fact, Warren Buffett once said that he loves boring businesses because they are so predictable, they never change. It's always the same. So you've got little new competition coming in because it's boring. People want to go into the next exciting thing. So these are boring businesses that are predictable but have stagnant or moderate growth. So don't expect 20% growth rate. Expect more like 5 to 6% growth rate. But these are great for investors who do not mind moderate returns with low volatility. Defensive stocks tend to outperform during a recession. So if you look back at the previous year's recessions, when the general stock market was collapsing, defensive stocks were going up. Or at least they went sideways, they never went down. Why? Because people still use their products. So the best time to buy defensive stocks is when you expect a recession to hit and to last for a while. At the same time, defensive stocks tend to underperform during an economic boom. When the recession is over and the economy recovers, you know, stocks will start going up, they start recovering. And defensive stocks are the last ones to recover up or the last ones to move up. They move really slowly. So if you look below, these are what we call defensive products or defensive companies. What would the stock chart look like? Well, first, if you look at the entire US market, these are the defensive sectors. Healthcare, consumer staples, and utilities. So you could buy the individual companies like Johnson & Johnson, Abbott Laboratories, PepsiCo, Coca-Cola, Kimberly Club, or you could buy the entire sector ETF called the XLV or the XLP or the XLU. And by buying that ETF, you get exposure to all the companies in that sector. Typically, if you look at a defensive stock, what do you think the chart looks like, the stock chart looks like? Yeah, you guessed it. It looks something like this. If you look at a five or 10 year horizon, Notice the stock price goes up very consistently on a very clear uptrend with very shallow dips because it's defensive. Now, the opposite of defensive stocks would be cyclical stocks. Or I call them mood swing stocks. All right? So cyclical stocks are stocks of companies that sell products or services that are a luxury or they're highly dependent on the economic situation. So for example, automobiles. During good times, you may go up to buy a car or a refrigerator or a $10,000 massage chair, right? You, you borrow more from the banks, for example. You build a house. 
But in times of recessions, when times are bad, you cut back on these luxuries. You don't you know, buy a new car, you don't change your refrigerator, you don't borrow as much from the bank. So as a result, these companies generate very high sales and profits during economic expansions. But they generate very low profits or they make huge losses during recessions and contractions. So their stock price tends to be very much correlated to the health of the economy. These are great for investors who are willing to experience high volatility, huge swings in the value of their stock, but for higher gains. Now, cyclical stocks perform badly during a recession for obvious reasons. When a recession hits, these are the stocks that drop like flies. They drop the fastest and the first. But at the same time, when the economy recovers and bottoms, these stocks fly. They're the first to go up, they go up the fastest. So obviously, um, you only want to buy cyclical stocks during an economic recovery and expansion. And you want to buy defensive stocks when the economy is going to a recession. So that's how professionals shift their portfolios around between defensive and cyclical stocks. So these are the cyclical, well, before I show you the sectors, take a look at the chart. Typically, what does the chart look like? If you look at a cyclical stock over 5 to 10 years, the price looks exactly like a roller coaster ride. It goes all the way up and collapses. All the way up, goes down. All the way up and all the way down. So in general, you do not want to buy and hold cyclical stocks unless you want to go on a roller coaster ride and have a heart attack. Okay? If you want to buy and hold for the long term and close your eyes and use what we call dollar cost averaging, you want to do that only for defensive stocks. For cyclical stocks, you must time your entry using technical analysis. You only want to buy when the price starts an uptrend. And you want to buy it near the bottom. And that's where technical analysis can help you to determine support at bottoms and resistance at tops and where the main trend channel lines or the range of the stock. At the same time, when the stock hits a high, you may even want to short sell the stock at a resistance and profit as it collapses next to the, down to the support or the bottom range of the stock. Typically, these are cyclical stocks or cyclical sectors, if you will. Consumer discretionary, these are luxury goods. Uh, you have technology com uh, companies, industrials, finance, energy, and materials. So once again, you can buy the individual stocks of these sectors, or you can buy the entire sector ETF. And among these sectors, I would say that industrials, materials are the more cyclical. And technology is the least cyclical. Because, I mean, in the worst recession, you still use technology, right? So they're cyclical, but they're in a secular bull market. And that's why Apple, for example, continued to do well during the financial crisis because people still use the products and the technology. To understand the difference between defensive and cyclical stocks, let's get more specific. So just as the universe of human beings can be further subdivided into different races and cultures, so can stocks. In fact, stocks can be divided into about six specific categories. And which category you invest in depends on your objectives and depends on your needs because each category has got different characteristics and each category, the stocks behave very differently. So let's take a look at the first category. Category number one would be income or dividend stocks. These are specifically companies that pay a percentage of their profits out as dividends and not all companies do this. In fact, companies that tend to do this are large, mature companies in a slow growth industry. Why? Because the profits they make, they don't have much things to invest in anymore. They're not growing anymore. So they have a lot of excess cash that they just return to shareholders. So when you buy these companies, your objective is not really in growth or capital gains because these companies don't grow anymore or they grow very slowly. The objective is only in collecting dividends or passive income from the company every quarter of every year. So when you invest in income stocks, 
you're looking for certain characteristics. You want the companies to have a dividend yield of at least 4 to 5 percent. You want the companies to be consistently increasing their dividend per share for the last five years. You want the company to be consistently increasing their net income and cash flow operations for the last five years. You want the share price to be stable and not too volatile. You want it to be in a range or slowly trending up. The best kind of dividend stocks will be defensive companies and predictable companies where the product hardly changes. So you can be sure in 10 years, they're still going to be around. So for dividend stocks, avoid cyclical stocks like airlines, commodities, shipping, property, and so on and so forth. You want consumer staple companies. You want more defensive companies. So examples of defensive and dividend paying stocks in Singapore would be Starhub, Singtel. You've got Singapore Press Holdings. In the US, you've got McDonald's, you've got Coca-Cola, you've got 3M, you've got Clorox, you have Honeywell, you have Hershey's Chocolates, all right? And for dividend companies, you intend to buy and hold for the long term to collect the dividends. So you want the company to have conservative debt. One way is to look at their interest cover ratio, which is net interest expense divided by cash flow from operations. You want it to be less than 30%, which means their debt exposure is conservative. So again, you can dollar cost average and buy and hold these companies if you want to. The second category of stocks, I would say, are Warren Buffett's favorite. These are large cap predictable companies. Again, a company is predictable when the product never changes. For example, a hundred years ago, Coca-Cola's product and Coca-Cola today is the same product. It, it never changes, all right? And these are normally products and services you use regularly. These are large companies that have wide economic modes, sustainable competitive advantage and very predictable earnings and cash flow from operations. Again, their product or service never goes obsolete and it tends to be defensive in nature. Large cap predictables offer you slow but steady capital appreciation with growth rates between 5 to 10%. Again, these are companies you can buy and hold for the long term and even dollar cost average. And they are very similar to the dividend paying ones, but they may or may not pay dividends. So Clorox again, Colgate, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, 3M, these are large cap predictables. So typically, if you look at their chart, in, on the long-term basis, they make a very clear uptrend, like in the case of Colgate, with very minor dips along the way. The third category of stocks would be large cap, high growth companies. So these are normally large companies that have extremely high growth potential. They grow not at 5 to 10% like predictable companies, but they grow at 20, 25, 50% a year. As a result of their high growth, their price is normally selling at a premium. Their price is usually near or above their intrinsic value. And their share price is usually on a very steep uptrend. It's going up really exponentially. So these are stocks you buy, not for dividends. Usually these companies do not pay dividends. Why? Because they keep reinvesting their capital into technology and growth and new markets. So the share price tends to go up really fast. However, what's the downside of large cap growth stocks? That's right. They can't grow forever. Their high growth is not sustainable. And the moment their growth slows down, these stocks tend to collapse by 50 to 60%, and some of them never recover. But some of them may eventually become low-growth stocks. So these are companies that are very risky to buy and hold. You never want to buy and hold a growth company because eventually all the huge profits would disappear. For these companies, you only want to buy on uptrends, and you have to exit the moment the downtrend happens. 
And in technical analysis, I'll teach you exactly how to read the change in trend. So examples of growth stocks would be Facebook, Amazon, LinkedIn, Netflix, Priceline, Alphabet, well, that used to be called Google, Apple. So if you look at LinkedIn, for example, recently, the stock price collapsed by 50%. Why? Because the growth slowed down. Twitter was a growth stock, it collapsed. So these are stocks where you have to hit and run. You can't hold on to them for too long. Next, fourth category, deep cyclicals. Deep cyclicals are companies which are highly capital intensive. Right? They have huge equipment. For example, shipping companies, manufacturers, uh, rig, you know, offshore rig, oil rigs. Right? They have the inability to respond to demand changes quickly. For example, a shipping company, they have many ships, they've got many workers. In a recession, they can't sell their ships, they can't find their workers, they're stuck with this huge capital. So as a result, they lose a lot of money during recessions when they're under capacity. But they make huge profits when the economy is doing well. So examples of deep cyclicals, real estate, finance, oil and gas companies, offshore and marine, and commodity companies. Now, deep cyclicals, the price of the stock looks like a roller coaster, right? Again, it goes all the way up, slams all the way down, all the way up, all the way down, all the way up, all the way down. If you look at it, on a 10-year horizon, the price may end up to be at the same place with after all those swings. So these are companies, again, that you do not want to buy and hold. You only want to buy when the stock price is near the bottom of the cycle. Now, how would you know? That's where technical analysis and fundamental analysis comes in during the training programs. I'm going to teach you how to know when the stock has bottomed and when it starts a new uptrend. That's when you buy. At the same time, you must sell these stocks the moment they're at the top of their cycle and they're just about going to come down into a new downtrend. Category number four, or five, if you will, turnaround companies. These are good companies whose stock prices have been beaten down temporarily by bad news. For example, they are hit by financial scandals. The CEO resigned. There was a product uh, fault or something like that. And as a result of this temporary bad news, the stock price is usually way below the intrinsic value. And again, Warren Buffett likes to buy companies like these, where he believes the company, the company's competitive advantage and business model is still intact. It's just suffering a temporary setback. And the best time to enter is when the price has resumed its uptrend, because you never want to catch the bottom. You never know where the bottom is. It can keep going lower and lower as long as the bad news is in place. So example of turnaround companies, would be the financial companies like banks after the financial crisis, like Citigroup, Bank of America. And they were selling way below their intrinsic value and book value. That was the time Buffett started buying them. And you could buy them as well. Currently, the oil and gas sector is really undervalued because of oil prices collapsing. And the good companies will eventually recover. They will turn around. Yahoo was a turnaround story but now it's going back down again. So you have to learn how to exit after the turnaround is over and you may plunge into another series of bad news. Apple was a turnaround company when Steve Jobs died. It managed to turn around. Young Brands is a turnaround when it faced difficulties in China because of using expired meat products. So a turnaround company, the price normally goes up and gets hit by bad news. So you want to buy only when it starts to resume its uptrend and turns around. You never want to catch the bottom and buy on a downtrend. The last category will be fast growers. These are small to medium-sized companies that grow at least 25% a year. Now remember, every large company like a Google, like an Apple, like, like Twitter, they were once small companies. So some people, they like to buy small companies before they grow huge. That's when you can see the value of your capital increase by 5 to 10 to 15 to 20 times. 
So possibility of very high returns if these small companies turn into medium or large companies. It's kind of like buying the baby before the baby grows into an adult. However, buying small companies, we call them small caps, are more risky. Not all of them will survive, right? They tend to have narrow economic modes. They've got smaller competitive advantages when they begin, and they have potential cash flow problems. So when you buy these small companies, you have to be more stringent on their debt. Buy them only if they've got conservative debt and healthy cash flow. So example of small companies that started growing big would be Emba, Noah Holdings, and Globet. These are small cap companies. So this concludes this educational video on different stocks, different strategies. I'm Adam Crew.